Birds are beautiful creatures. You might even go as far as to call them majestic. But an under-discussed aspect of birds is just how varied they are. Some of them are so astoundingly one-of-a-kind that there's truly no other bird like them. These are the most unique birds in the world. Number 20. The Potu Bird the Potu bird is, without a doubt, one of the strangest and most unique birds in the animal kingdom, that is, if you can spot them. Their feathers and general physique, for that matter, are incredibly well suited to camouflage themselves in the wild. Potus come in a variety of shapes and sizes and are the masters of disguise since they're only active at night and sleep during the day. Their plumage, like that of most other nocturnal birds, functions as camouflage, making them seem like a piece of a tree or even a broken off stump. The common potu bird whistles a sorrowful succession of notes that descend in pitch while the great potu bird makes a deep guttural sound and loud squawks. Many visitors have been scared by these eerie sounds, which have even inspired some crazy folklores about ghosts. The common potu's cry is said to be the melancholy lament of a spirit in love with the fairway spirit of the moon. Potu birds have enormous mouths, while also having short beaks, and during the night their big jaws help them to capture moths, beetles, and other insects. Potus do lay a single egg, but instead of creating a nest, they put it in the crevice of a tree or a broken off stem. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. The feather duster budgie is rather peculiar, rare, and a mutation of feathers that can happen in normal budgies. The mutation causes the feathers to become curly, almost giving the birds a glam rock look. As you can see, it sort of makes the budgie look like a feather duster, hence the name that's given to the mutation. Now there's no denying it makes the birds look extraordinarily unique and kind of badass. But as gorgeous as these budgies might be with their rock star vibes, it doesn't come without a serious downside. The very same genetic mutation that gives budgies these dazzling curly feathers are also drastically reducing their lifespan. They may be pretty, but they're destined to die young. It's so very sad. As always, comment down below using the hashtag sweet topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed you on the screen. Number 19. The Tufted Puffin Puffins in general are a very strange and unique bird. Just look at the name. These fairly small birds are black seabirds with a stocky build and a large head. Adults are mostly black with the exception of a white face and a long golden plume that curls over the back of their head and neck. The bill is big and reddish orange with a vivid orange-yellow plate across the base of the bill. The tufted puffin is mostly found in the North Pacific, inhabiting open seas, islands, and cliffs along the shoreline. When breeding, it has a bigger head than other puffin species and is easily distinguished by its strong white face mask and golden head plumes, which are particularly noticeable during the mating season. It is possible for the tufted puffin to catch and keep a large number of tiny fish in its beak, often 5 to 20 fish at a time, in order to bring them to the babies in the nest. Adults consume their own food while still submerged in the water, and the first tufted puffin was discovered in Alaska and was at least 6 years old, which made it the oldest living puffin of all time. That's not as old as I would have thought these birds could live. Oh, those poor little puffers. Number 18. Potzins. Now, <laughs> all I can say is wow, this next bird really looks like something from a time lost or a prehistoric age. You know, something that would have roamed with dinosaurs and cavemen. What is the name of this super colorful and wonderful bird, you may ask? Well, it's none other than the Hotzen. 
The Hudson's a rather petite bird of size and boasts a turquoise and orange-haired appearance, and these colorful buddies are a neotropical bird, living in the Amazon basin along slow-moving rivers and lakes. Because Hudson's have such a distinct appearance, make such loud calls, and often live in social groups, it's not all that surprising that they're frequently found in their habitat and tend to make themselves a pretty easy target for prey. Here's a pretty crazy fact about the Hudson. They share a very strange similarity with cows. Hudsons digest their food using bacterial fermentation, just like cows, goats, and sheep. The Hudson is the only bird in the world that has stomach compartments situated deep in the belly rather than in the rest of the digestive tract. Because the bird's diet consists almost entirely of leaves, which feed to the crop where bacterial fermentation takes place, the process is actually started by the crop itself. One of the drawbacks, though, of this bacteria? Well, it can smell really awful. The Hudson is sometimes referred to as the stink bird because of the foul-smelling bacteria that they emit. Number 17. The Kakapoo now, speaking of stinky, another rather unusual bird is the kakapoo, which is a large nocturnal flightless lek-breeding parrot, and this flightless bird has a cute owl-like face belonging to the Katinga ecosystem in New Zealand. The adult kakapoo is a deep green with yellow and black, while the baby is more of a yellowish color. All of this to say, these little parrots are actually pretty adorable. The male's deep booming and squawky calls summon mates to Lex, where males engage in mating. In fact, both males and females make a high-pitched shrill cry, and there are many other birds that could be confused with the kakapoo, yet their nocturnal habits really differentiate them from any possible confusion. Since there are only a few managed breeding sites in the area, the chances of a kakapoo being being misidentified are extremely low. The kakapoo is also considered to be a critically endangered species and is currently the focus of some fairly large conservation projects. Before humans arrived, New Zealand's forests were home to an abundance of bird species. However, due to overhunting and other predators, the number of bird species diminished to around only 50 by the mid-1990s. So why don't we all pitch in and not hunt down the kakapoo? Number 16. Keel Build Toucan. Now this is probably one of the more famous birds on the list, the Keel Build Toucan. But why? Well, just look at that bill. It's super gigantic. Keel Build Toucans are, in fact, known for their massive bills, which give them a bit of a clumsy appearance at first glance. The bills are nearly twice the size of the rest of the body, with their body having a bright yellow throat and cheeks, vibrant red feathers under their tails, and a yellow-green face. The bill may appear to be bulky thanks to it being made of protein, but it's actually light because of the bird's hollowed out bones. A bigger problem for the toucan though is its wings. Though the bones are hollow, the bird still has a hard time supporting itself from time to time because of how large the wings actually are. Tropical and subtropical rainforests from southern Mexico to Venezuela and Colombia provide the habitat for these birds, and the toucan is also crepuscular, which means that it's active during dawn and dusk. So what I'm really basically trying to say is that this is definitely a party bird, always ready for those crazy toucan dance soirees. Number 15. Ribbon-tailed Astrapia. Such a fitting name for a bird that has such a fabulous tail, it really does look like a little ribbon, doesn't it? The ribbon-tailed Astrapia is found in the forests of the Central Highlands in Papua New Guinea, which also serves as its breeding grounds. This colorful bird of paradise has a long, thin, and ribbon-like tail that is much larger than its body, with a total height of the bird being 32 centimeters long, including the tail. Adult males have an iridescent olive green and bronze plumage. Their long tails, when they're just hanging out on a branch, can sometimes perk up and come up behind their head. 
Though the males between the ages of 15 and 20 do have missing white tail feathers, the female has a brown body and head with iridescent feathers, and because of their looks, they can sometimes be mistaken for the nightingale. And also, just like the nightingale, the male astropia bird is polygamous. The name Astropia was picked in order to commemorate the great naturalist and explorer of New Guinea, Fred Shaw Mayer. He was believed to have discovered the bird in 1938 and gave it the scientific name for the ribbon-tailed peacock. The ribbon-tailed Astropia is listed as vulnerable because of its habitat loss and overhunting because, you know, everyone wants those beautiful feathers. As of now, the bird is officially categorized as extinct in the wild. Number 14. The Quetzal Speaking of birds with super long tails and wonderful tropical feathers, the next bird on our list definitely fits the bill. The Quetzal is also known for its vibrant plumage, and the long tail feather of the bird, which easily surpasses the length of the bird's body, is its most distinctive physical attribute, much like the Astropia. The Quetzal is mostly green in color with a red breast and can only be found in regions of Mexico and Central America, and even then, only in the distant highland and cloudy forest locations like Guatemala's highlands. The Quetzal, which is a member of the Trogan family, is a national bird of Guatemala and is the country's main symbol. Now, it may be seen on the country's flag along with its coat of arms, as well as providing its name to the country's national currency, among other places, and not only does it symbolize independence in the ancient Mayan world, but they're also considered to be one of the Mayan's spirit guides, known as Nahuels. Given that Quetzals often nest more than 200 feet above ground and that they're mostly green in color, they're not really often the most obvious birds to detect in a forest setting. They're also listed as near-threatened on the IUCN Red List, which is due to the loss of their natural habitat. Number 13. Magnificent Frigate Birds now, could you imagine being so cool that scientists would put the word magnificent directly in front of the name of your species? How cool would these birds really have to be? Well, magnificent frigate birds are fairly big seabirds with long angular wings that are distinctive in appearance, and they also have a tail that's deeply forked and is often retained closed in a pointed position. The bill is long and strong with a noticeably hooked tip at the end of each side. And the magnificent frigate bird is primarily black, with a few patches of white on its head, chest, and belly. The females are distinguished by a white breast and a black head, and juveniles start off with a white head and belly, and as they get older, their heads get darker. Younger birds also have a faint tan stripe on the top wing, the same as the adult. When males are capable of breeding, they become totally black, with the exception of a bright red neck pouch that is not always visible. This depends on the angle that you look at the bird. Though, look at that little sack. I wonder what they keep inside of that thing. Despite the fact that they're an oceanic bird, they don't really dive for fish. Instead, they skim fish off the surface of the water or chase after other birds, causing them to abandon their recent meal, all in order to escape. Number 12. The Sand Grouse SpongeBob SquarePants? More like Sand Grouse Sponge Feathers. The bird called the Sand Grouse is seriously able to transport water back to the nest by carrying it inside of its feathers, all so that it can rehydrate its little chickies. It seems to be impossible, and for decades, experts believed it to be a hoax that was created by the media. However, this is actually not the case. The male flies up to 20 kilometers to a small watering hole in the chill of the desert morning, wades into the water up to his belly, and then gathers it by the process of rocking. The bird fills up by shifting its body from side to side and vigorously shaking its belly feathers in the water, and this process can take up to 15 minutes. A sand grouse is capable of absorbing and transporting 25 milliliters of fluids, and this is because of its coiled, hair-like extensions on the feathers of its belly. That's a little more than two tablespoons. 
Once the male sand grouse is returned across the desert with his life-giving feathers, the chicks then congregate around him and use their beak like tiny squeegees to milk the water from their father's belly feathers, which they probably really needed considering that they live in the Sahara Desert and all. Nature does really seem to find a way of working itself out. Number 11. The Marabou Stork these are some of the craziest looking storks ever, if I may say so myself. Marabou storks have hollow toe bones in addition to hollow leg bones, and that's important for the adaption of flying in such an enormous bird. The African marabou stork has a wingspan of 2.66 meters, standing at a height of 1.5 meters. The males are distinguishable by their enormous air sacs and are somewhat bigger and taller than the females. A long crimson pouch hangs from the neck of the stork. But they are always ready to exploit any opportunity for a meal. And during courting rituals, this pouch is employed to impress the ladies. During the breeding season, the bare 18-inch inflated pink sack stands out even more, working as a sort of resonator, connecting directly to the left nostril and enabling the bird to generate a guttural croaking sound. The marabou stork is normally quiet, however if it does feel threatened it's going to make a beak clacking sound which is actually pretty terrifying. But what does the marabou stork eat? Well, the same thing as vultures actually, everyone else's leftovers. Although it may not seem so nice to humans, marabou's behavior is very important to the ecology in which they live. By picking at corpses and decaying garbage, the stork aids in the prevention of infection transmission of diseases. They're scavengers that devour anything from termites to flamingos, along with tiny birds and animals, as well as human garbage and dead elephants. Ew. Number 10. The Standard Winged Nightjar the next bird kind of sounds like it should be the name of a new superhero in the Batman universe. Nightjar, long lost brother of Nightwing. The standard winged Nightjar usually stands between 8 and 9 inches tall and has a song which is a kind of churring trill. The plumage is largely multi-shaded gray with brown toned collar and the standard winged Nightjar has no white spots in the wings or its tail like other Nightjar. Do. The wide white band across the otherwise totally black bird distinguishes the male from the female. During the mating season, males develop a ninth main feather on each side of the wing, which will develop to roughly 15 inches, or 38 centimeters in length, which amounts to being significantly longer than the length of the body. After the mating season, it frequently loses this long decorative wing feather, which either falls off or gets broken off, and there are no further differences in plumage between males and females after that. This bird is an African nightjar that lives in dry savanna areas from Senegal to Ethiopia, and its range extends from Gambia and western Liberia through central Cameroon, north to the Democratic Republic of Congo, southern Sudan, and probably even even into northeastern Kenya, though they're usually found along the coast from Liberia to western Cameroon, as well as southeastern Uganda during the dry seasons. Number 9. The Cock of the Rocks now, no, we're not talking about some festival featuring your favorite 80s hair metal bands. We're talking about one of the most distinctive and beautifully original birds on the list, the Cock of the Rocks. And yes, that is really its name. Not only is its name wholly original, but their entire physique is amazing as well. Apart from being one of the most recognizable birds in the world, this Andean condor is a bird that's substantially bigger and chunkier than any thrush. Males utter pig-like squeals and hop and dance for females at dawn around a different display site in the cloudy forests at medium altitudes where they're most commonly seen, occasionally encountered in other parts of the forest, particularly around fruit trees. Males may be either bright red or orange in color, with black wings and large silver tertials, along with orange legs and a puffy rounded crown. Females, on the other hand, may be either bright crimson or orange in color. 
Nests are built along boulders or cliff walls, and out of all birds, there's only one other species that's even comparable to the cock of the rock, even though there's no overlap in their ranges. All that's to say that this Andean condor truly is one of a kind. Number 8. The Hooded Pitahui now I think we've all heard of poisonous snakes, and spiders, and even frogs, but have you ever heard of a poisonous bird? Well then, let me introduce you to the hooded pitahui. One of the world's only living toxic birds. It's even the world's first venomous bird to have been formally reported in a scientific journal or book. Roughly the size of a dove with black feathers on the head and an orange or red belly, it stands at about 9 inches in length on average. They're what's called passerines, aka songbirds, and are part of the corvid family together with crows and ravens. They feature sharp claws on the ends of their black legs, as well as a powerful black beak. The colors and odors of the hooded pitahui are assumed to be aposematic, meaning that they're intended to deter predators from attacking. This bird is found in the rainforests and tropical jungles of New Guinea, an island situated north of Australia. These birds are omnivorous birds, meaning that they'll consume a wide range of both plant and animal items, such as berries and insects. Corazine, a New Guinea beetle, is also a component of their diet, and is thought to be the source of the deadly qualities of the bird. So if by some crazy chance you do see this bird in the wild, run away as fast as you can. Number 7. The Three Waddled Bellbird These little wormy things on the three waddled bellbird seem weird, but that's just the male that has these three slim, elongated, gray-black wattles, the worm-like skin thingies hanging from his beak. The female lacks these wattles and has a completely different appearance than the male, but both sexes do have a huge black beak and a robust body. The female has an olive green head with thin yellow lines, a small yellow eye ring, and a brilliant yellow underside, along with broad dark olive green stripes. The female is therefore well camouflaged under the canopy's luxurious greenery. The male, on the other hand, has a dazzling white head, neck, and chest, as well as a consistent consistent chestnut rufus hue all over his body, so he's not really so great at camouflage, but is awesome for attracting mates. This bird may be found between eastern Honduras and western Panama in the intermediate to upper forest levels of the lowlands, all the way to elevations of 900 to 3,000 meters or above. Outside of the mating season, it's frequently found at lower altitudes in the woodlands where this bellbird hangs out, and has an unpleasantly strange bonk that's often heard. This is actually the mating call of the bird. Because the bellbird sings among the topmost branches of the canopy, its well-projected cry may be heard up to half a kilometer. Number 6. The Sri Lanka Frogmouth the Sri Lanka frogmouth resides in the western ghats of South India and Sri Lanka and is a tiny nocturnal bird with a length of around 22 centimeters. These birds are sexually dimorphic, meaning that each sex has its own feather colors, with males being a light gray brown and females being chestnut. The males also have a speckled crown and narrow barring. Their eyes are surrounded by short, stiff bristles, while the bill is broad and hooked in the middle. The eyes are forward-facing, and the nose is slit-like. Frogmouth species in deep tropical woods, evergreen woods, and bamboo thickets sleep in trees and might actually be found in plantations from time to time. Insects, beetles, and moths make up what these nocturnal birds eat, while moss, down feathers, lichens, and bark are used to construct the nest. A single egg is deposited and both parents incubate it in turn. Finally, there's some co-parenting in the animal world. Number 5. The King of Saxony now, we had one bird that had magnificent in the name, and this time we've got one that's a king? Well, what's next? A bird that's called a fish? The king of Saxony is a bird of paradise, and is a monotypic genus with just one member, which is kind of lonely. But what's even lonelier is that the bird is only found in New Guinea's highland forest, 
Natives of Papua New Guinea and Western New Guinea refer to the bird as cassaba, which is a human interpretation of the male's loud booming cry. The adult king of Saxony bird of paradise is around 22 centimeters in length, having a dark brown iris, a black beak, brownish gray legs, and an aqua green beak. They also have two 50 centimeter long scalloped enamel blue eyebrows, which may be erected at the bird's whim and used to attract the ladies, of course. The unadorned female has banded underparts and is grayish brown in color. Fruits, berries, and arthropods make up the majority of their diet. Number four, the helmeted hornbill. The hornbill is a huge bird that belongs to the hornbill family that calls the Malay Peninsula, Sumatra, and Borneo its home. It's a sedentary bird, unlike many fruit-eating hornbills, and couples maintain a territory. Males actually struggle over territory by ramming each other with their beaks. So they're lazy and they're violent? It's kind of starting to seem like these birds are really likable. Except for the belly and their legs, which are blackish, and the tail, which is white with a black band towards the tip, the helmeted hornbill has largely blackish plumage. The tail itself can be quite lengthy, and the two center tail feathers are substantially longer than the rest, reaching up to one meter in length, which gives the bird a maximum length of 160 centimeters. This makes it the longest amongst all hornbills. Females have a blue throat patch, while males have a red one. The large display of growth on the bill's upper mandible extends from the bill's base halfway to the tip, where it then suddenly stops. This and the bill are yellow. The preen gland's red secretion covers the sides and the top of the growth, as well as the base of the bill, although the front end of the growth and the distal half of the bill are often just left yellow. Number three, the Inca Tern. The Inca Tern may be found throughout the west coast of South Africa, from Ecuador to Peru and Chile. It's only found in the Humboldt Currents region. This bird breeds on sandy beaches and steep cliffs, as well as inshore guano islands and offshore islands close to rocky shores. The Inca Tern is a sociable, diurnal species that lives and breeds in vast colonies of several thousands, frequently near gull colonies. When eating, Inca terns often mingle with whales and sea lions, snatching food from these fellow marine creatures. They eat by diving from a great height after a short flight above their food, or by surface dipping, which involves swimming or sitting on the water and picking the food up from the surface. They can't swim very well since their webbed feet aren't really that large, so instead they stay put with their habitat. However, non-breeding birds may actually migrate depending on food availability. Number two, the golden pheasant. The golden pheasant is a tiny game bird that's native to western China's woodlands, although naturalized populations may be found all over the globe. It's also known as the Chinese pheasant and rainbow pheasant, weighing in about 1.4 pounds with a wingspan of approximately 70 centimeters. The mature male comes in at between 35 and 41 inches, and its tail accounts for more than half of its whole length with a golden crown and rump, as well as other strong hues which include red, mahogany, blue, purple, yellow, and black. It's quite the striking and vibrant bird. The female is smaller, measuring about 24 to 31 inches, and with less ornate black and brown feathers and a shorter tail. Yellow legs and beaks are seen on both the male and the female. Golden pheasants, much like chickens, have the capacity to fly short distances, but they do, however, spend much of their time on the ground, running wherever they need to get while eating seeds, grains, leaves, berries, and insects. Humans are their primary predator, however, they're also prey for foxes and wildcats, and if given half the chance, large rats and other birds will also feast on golden pheasant eggs. Number 1 the long-waddled umbrella bird. 
The name of this bird really is the cherry on top of it all. As you could probably guess, the name comes from the fact that they kind of look like umbrellas. Also known as the bull bird, the long waddled umbrella bird is a Katinga species that, like our buddy the cock of the rock, utilizes lex to find a mate. Males use legs to display their magnificent crest feathers, which cover their heads up to the beak, like a pompadour coiffed by the most flamboyant of hairdressers as part of their elaborate mating act. During this exhibition of skill, a massive and strange pendulum hangs over its breast like a tie, expanding it to exhibit its short and shining feathers all standing upright. In the Lex, umbrella birds scream melodies, as if blowing a horn super duper loud, which is a pretty serious and genuine scream of love. The long waddled umbrella bird can be found in the Choco region of western Colombia and Ecuador, on the Andes flanks, interconnected with mountain foot rainforests, and plains that look out over the Pacific Ocean. It's a vital species for the forest because it helps to distribute seeds by consuming fruit and then regurgitating. It also consumes insects and small animals like lizards. Now, if there's one thing that we can take away from this list, it's that the world of birds isn't just pigeons and little robins and cardinals. There really are some fascinating and incredibly beautiful birds around the world. Which of these birds did you find the most colorful and friendly? Let me know in the comments below. Also check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.